This drink, I like it. I know, it's great, right? Another! <laughs> What is going on, everybody? Welcome to another new episode of Film on Tap, where we've got the tap that never runs out. We've got a new haircut for Andre, so you're definitely gonna you're definitely gonna want to watch the video version of this episode. He's not entirely happy with it. We've uh, we've tried to be supportive. We've tried. Oh, I hate it. I hate it so much. And like, hair and like the, grows. And, hair, and, yeah, okay. hair grows. And like, to, and like to give people context, like I've told the story to like six different people. They're like, "No, you're not crazy, Andre." So I'm like, "No, I, I know I'm not crazy because I've been doing this for over 30 years by this point." But like yeah. I, I just told my barber, I was like, "Can I get one and a half on the side and then three and a half on the top? Three and a half inches is what I said." And then he was like, "All right." And then they took the clipper and then went. Arr! I'm like, "Oh goodness!" <laughs> and I love that Jen's first reaction was two things. She was just went, she just went, "Okay, it's really short." And then the second thing was. Thank God we're not getting married anytime soon. <laughs> Ooh. Uh, you Ooh. never cut your hair right before you get married. Yeah, yeah no. definitely not. No, not no. after this. No, no, no. <laughs> no. But, but that's your Andre's hair recap. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it, it's been quite a saga. Um, but today we've got a quite a jam-packed show. We've got a few big trailers to talk about. Of course, we're going to be talking Guardians Three. We're going to be delving into that one quite a bit. But let's jump into these trailers. Let's start with. Uh, a trailer for a prequel that's hit in theaters this fall. A prequel a lot of people are excited about. It is The Hunger Games, The Ballad of Songburns. Songburns, Jesus Christ. Songburns. <laughs> the Ballad of Songburns. Because song we burns. all got burned yeah. by that last movie. <laughs> Sure. Uh, no. <laughs> sure. Sure. The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. We got our first trailer for the movie that's coming out this fall. What do we think? Let's start with Nancy. What do we think of this trailer? When you said songbirds, all I can think of is Mr. Burns be like, excellent. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Watching Hunger Games. Yes. Yes. Let's get all the districts he's, together. He's President Snow. Yeah, um, pretty much. That, that is yeah. a mashup waiting to happen. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but uh, I'm a huge fan of the Hunger Games franchise, uh, which is funny because, to be honest, they're not fantastic movies. Like, the second one was really good. The first one wasn't no. so great. Third one's kind of boring, but that's what happens when you s split a book in two. And the fourth one is really good. Um, so, for whatever reason, I still love the franchise. Yeah, it's it's really, really good. So, um, I'm really looking forward to this movie. I think it looks visually very, very good. I'm super interested to see how Snow becomes President Snow, how we get the, you know, how the Hunger Games become the Hunger Games. And of course, Peter Dinklage is in it, which is fantastic. I'm glad that they got him for this movie. So I'm looking forward to it. I had a feeling no matter what the trailer was going to look like, unless it looked like complete shit like the first one, I probably would be on board regardless. Gotcha. All right. So we, we got a Hunger Games pro right there. What about you, Andres? I think for me, I do enjoy the franchise quite a bit, but it's one of those where I've actually read the books before going forward into this, into whatever the trailer is for, for this. But the thing is, is that I haven't read this, the last one. Uh, I haven't read uh, Songbirds and Snakes. I haven't read that one. But even still, I kind of feel like the original franchise kind of wrapped up really well and I'm usually very wary of prequels and I'm still a little wary about this one but you know Rachel is very much just like a very charismatic actress so whatever she's in I'm on board for and I will definitely go check out mm -hmm. I will say um what's the scene uh is it, is it Jason Jason Schwartzman who's yeah in this movie yeah yeah, oh my god. Yeah. Uh, like 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 what a pitch perfect uh freaking Stanley Tucci he was. I yeah. never knew he had that in him, guys. <laughs> He's just got it. Yeah, but so far all, all of it I, I think it's still a little early to say I mean it's it's an announcement piece more than anything else. So like overall I think it, it looks solid going forward, so I'm I'm pro for it. Okay. I mean, I'm, I'm kind of in the same boat. I just like, I mean, the Hunger Games has been over for such a long time. I forgot that this movie was even coming out. So in the trailer, I was like, oh, right. Um, sure. And it visually looks like a Hunger Games movie. It's nice to have Francis Lawrence back at directing the movie. I think he's a great director. I think he's done wonderful things with the Hunger Games movie. Did he direct more than Catching Fire? Did he do the rest of them? Yeah, or? He, yeah. yeah. he did the rest of them going yeah. forward. 
That's what I thought. Um, but he definitely has a good grasp on this franchise. Visually, it looks stunning. The casting looks perfect. And I'm definitely interested in the story. It's intriguing. I'm not usually a prequel guy. I'm just I'm never really interested in what came before for the most part. Um, but I am interested to see how the Hunger Games first came to be and see younger versions of a lot of, you know, a lot of the characters we know. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's fine. It's a fine trailer. It's It does its job. It has me kind of intrigued. But other than that, like, it didn't, like, wow me or anything. But, yeah, I guess I'll see it. <laughs> I, I guess I'll see the movie. It's fine. Um, but, you, you know, uh, a trailer that I think generates a little bit more buzz, a little bit more excitement, let's be honest, Dune 2. Dune 2, we finally are getting our second part to Dune uh, from Denis Villeneuve. Uh, and that's hitting theaters this November. We got our first big trailer here that showed a lot more than I thought we were actually going to get. So that was a nice surprise. What did we think of this one? We'll start with Andre, since I know you're a huge Dune guy. Ooh. Nothing, nothing fancy. Nothing. Okay, Nancy, what did you think? I was, I, was, <laughs> I was on board with this fucking trailer. I loved it. I loved it top to bottom. I mean, just showing showing us a little glimpse in the Fade Rathar uh, with Austin Butler. Again, I had my predispos- predispositions about Austin Butler playing that role. Unless he truly transformed himself, which right off the bat in this trailer, he's almost unrecognizable. And he really does look like a Harkonnen. So I was Which very one's Austin surprised. Butler? <laughs> <laughs> what? I said, which one is Austin? But I know who Austin Na- Butler is. I don't know who he is in the trailer. Nancy is so that, over that's the lore. The, that's the exact point. <laughs> She's so he's, over he's... the lore of this whole franchise. <laughs> Literally, as you're like dro- name dropping all these different people, she's like, fucking. <laughs> <laughs> I can't keep like, it straight. Who, she's like, who the fuck is he playing? Just fuck. Yeah. <laughs> well, oh, oh, no, but seriously, who is he in the trailer? <laughs> in, 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 the tra- in the trailer, he's that um, he's that big albino guy in the, uh, in the Coliseum. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I did not yeah. recognize him. Nope. That, yeah. that, well, that, that's exactly the point, because it was one of those things where it's like, you know, you have to sort of semi-transform yourself so that you could look like the character, and I think Butler has a very defined face and a very defined personality, if that makes any sense, especially now that he was Elvis. And then just watching this trailer, I'm like, oh, he looks like a legit killer. So this is great. This is going to be fantastic. But The only thing that was weird is that they, th- didn't, they didn't let us hear his voice. I, I was, was gonna say, I swear to God, he yeah. better not have his Elvis was, voice about to say, still. Because that was honestly All that the thing bullshit I wanted. Of it's permanent. Yeah. Yeah. It's like no, <laughs> no, because like vi- visually, I was like, I was buying it, but I was like, I need to hear what he sounds like, and I don't think it's an accident. We don't hear him talk. <laughs> so, I, I, we, but but a we little, don't hear a, a lot of we don't hear a lot of people apart from the main crew that's on Dune and then also the princess who Florence Pugh's playing and, I all, know. and she nails it dude I mean I, so I just I just need him to not sound like Elvis that's all I'm saying yeah that's <laughs> what I was concerned <laughs> about too yeah yeah because I went in and was like I know visually he'll look cool but like I need to know that he doesn't just sound like Elvis but bald <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> bald Elvis yeah oh man see that, exactly. that's the hope with that but everything else from what we've seen so far about this movie has me really excited. We haven't even been introduced to the Emperor, who's played by Christopher Walken. We haven't even been introduced to a majority of the players in this second part. And so far, everything I've seen about it, just get it, it. Like, as soon as I saw this trailer, I'm like, this is why this is my most anticipated movie of the year. This is exactly it. There you go. But Nancy, since you're so deeply invested in the lore and the mythology and the characters, I'm, I'm really interested to hear from you. Uh, I think you hit the nail on the head of just, it's a lot. Um, I, very, I very quickly realized I need to rewatch the first one because I had no background on Dune whatsoever when the first movie came out. I had no idea what it was about. I had, like, nothing. So right. watching it for the first time, it's such a long movie. There's so much to absorb. Seeing it the one time and then seeing the trailer, I'm like, yeah, I don't really remember what the hell happened in the first movie. I need to rewatch this. That, that literally I mean, reminds me of, like, when my we sat my dad to watch Tenet for the first time. My dad was so excited to see that movie. And we watched, I think it was, like, right after Christmas dinner or whatever. And we watched the movie. I'm looking at him, and I could tell he's being overwhelmed by this movie. And as soon as the credits roll, he gets up, he looks at me, doesn't say a word, and just goes... <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, I'm going to bed. <laughs> well, it's also one of those lot. movies that doesn't really do a good job of... Oh, it's t- um, and you can't hear what anyone says. It's like... <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> that is pretty Nolan, much what the dialogue sounds yeah. like. <laughs> Nolan, I'm looking at you right now. Don't do the same shit with Oppenheimer. He's going please. to. He's probably going to. If, if, if he does, you will lose much more worse to Barbie than you already are going to. Wow. Okay. Oh, okay. Threats are being made. Are being made. <laughs> but but, but did the trailer made. get you excited despite all, everything being yeah, a little overwhelming? Yeah, I'll still watch it. It's just I have to. It's hard to get excited like you know, Andres is because Andres, you know all of the characters. So for me, it's like character, character, character. I'm like, I don't know who the fuck these people are. That looks cool. Uh, so it looks cool. It looks interesting. I just have to almost get reinvested into it again. So yeah, the trailer looks great. Movie, I have to just get into the get into the right mind space for. Gotcha. I mean, I'm like I, like Nancy. Like, I don't know anything about like the characters, never read the books or anything. But I loved the first movie so very much. I was so invested in it. I felt like I, I didn't really feel overwhelmed watching it in terms of like getting to know all the characters and the story and the world. I just thought it was all fascinating, and I was like, okay, I would totally watch like three more of these movies. So the fact that we're actually getting a sequel so soon is amazing, and that we've got an even more stacked cast here, and it looks so good. Like it just it, the visually, it's stunning. You know, Greg Fraser killing it with the cinematography as per usual. Um, the the story looks even more interesting this time around. We get a little bit more Zendaya in this story. We get some new characters. Obviously, we get that you know Austin Butler villainous character, which I'm excited about. But like the whole sequence of him trying to like ride a worm was amazing, and I fucking love that. And I like that they injected a little bit of humor into this. You know, it's like nothing too fancy. It's like right, nothing fancy and everything. I, I was like, all right, cool. We're adding a little bit more humor. I like that. It's not overdone. Let's do it. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm super excited for this one. I think I think it looks gorgeous, like the first movie and. I'm in. I'm, I'm totally in. I actually forgot that it was coming out this year. I thought it was like maybe next year. So I got super excited when I saw the trailer and it said like 23. I was like, yes! I was like, I was like yes! Oh my god, November? That's that's good. Um, that's soon. Um, but yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited for it. I think it's going to be a good time. But another trailer that hit the, uh, the interwebs this past week was for a movie I was not on my radar even remotely and that was uh, Gran Turismo the adaptation of that popular racing game um, I was very curious to see what they were going to do with the story and I have to say it's it's an interesting take you know it's, it's not terrible and it looks like it has like a good sense of humor about itself you know it seems like the uh, the idea itself is ridiculous but it actually like the movie knows it's ridiculous and it has David Harbour so like <laughs> and it's directed by Neil Blomkamp who hopefully can make a good movie again so we'll see what do you guys think? Let's we'll start with Andre. Honestly, when they announced the Gran Turismo movie was coming out, I'm a big gamer. Gran Turismo was always like the the driving simulator, if that makes any sense. It's like, okay, no, this is cool and all this other stuff, but it was never really my cup of tea. Whereas the second that they announced that they were making that into a movie, I'm like, I just got flashbacks to um, what's his name? Um, what Need for Speed? <laughs> Need for Speed. Well, well, Need for Speed. But I'm talking about like uh, what, what the hell is his name? Uh, Paul, um, oh my God, the guy who plays guy who plays uh, Breaking Bad. Oh my goodness, Aaron Paul. Uh, Aaron Paul. There we go. Like, like mm. just see like how that movie had even a stacked cast with Michael Keaton as the villain, and it still was like just a very meh experience. And then seeing this and sort of being like, the story has me really intrigued because it is taking a gamer who should not yeah. be in any way good at this at all and then just sticking him into a car and seeing exactly what the trials and tribulations of that is yeah. and having David Harbour sort of be the trainer I mean like that that to me is an interesting story and then also with the fact that this is based on an actual event that makes me further yeah. intrigued in terms of what what the story has to offer because this is not a literal adaptation this is like sort of like a loose adaptation of that video game so I'm on board. I'm yeah, on board. I'm, I'm weirdly on board for this one. How about you, Nancy? Yeah, when I first heard they were going to make a Gran Turismo uh, movie and, you know, watching the trailer, I was like, this is stupid. I don't, I don't, <laughs> this I is don't fucking want dumb. it. <laughs> this and is then dumb. it said, based on a true story, I was like, okay, I'm back in. Just like, kidding. God, God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> you got me. Uh, any movie based on a true story, whether it's very loosely based on a true story or, you know, to a T, for whatever reason, I feel like it just makes me more interested in it. I was actually, uh, I need to finish. I was watching Conviction right now, uh, oh. the Hilary Swank movie. So any movie like that, just based on real life events, always gets me, gets me into the seats. 
Yep. I'm a sucker so. for a true story. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a sucker so for real life violence. Yeah. Yeah. And you know what? David Harbour, gotta love him. I'll watch I'll, anything he's in. I love David Harbour. He's the best. He, like, Even that Santa movie. It was great. Oh, I love the Santa movie. I love Violent I know. Night. I, I can't remember what... Oh, yeah, Violent Night. I was like, whatever that movie was. Yeah, I thought we all reviewed it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we did. That's what I'm saying. I'm saying even a ridiculous movie like that, I will watch him in and I will yeah. enjoy yeah, he's he, he he always elevates whatever he's in, whether the movie's bad or good. He's always a good part in it or a highlight. Um, but now it is time to jump into the main event, everybody. What everyone's been waiting for, let's talk. Let's talk some Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. We all got a chance to see it. It hit theaters this weekend. Uh, huge, huge movie for Marvel. Hopefully, you know, one that'll lead to some better movies because I frankly think this is the best thing they've done in quite some time. Let's talk about it. Obviously, there's going to be spoilers. So if you have not seen the movie, definitely stop watching or listening and come back after you have because it's going to be very spoiler heavy. So just generally, before we dive into spoilers, what did you guys think of the movie? We'll start with you, Nancy. I thought it was really good. I did not expect to get teary eyed within the first like 30 seconds of the movie. <laughs> so I was like, oh, OK, this is great. It's like, All right. <laughs> um, yeah, no, it was very good. And I, you know, they hid the fact that the whole movie was going to revolve around yeah, Rocket yeah, very yeah, that well. Was great. Yeah, that was great. I did not expect that. I, but I like that. I like that they didn't give us the main plot of the movie, but still kept us interested. And I think that was such a smart way to go about it. I also love a movie that sticks to a theme, uh, but various different ways. And I feel like the theme of this movie was all about letting go. Uh, so you have like Rocket letting go, which we'll get into details later, but Rocket letting go, you have uh, Quill letting go, you have uh, even like, uh, oh my gosh, I can't think of the other one I was thinking of. But anyways, just a lot of, it's, I feel like that was just the theme of the movie of like letting go of a lot of stuff in your life, whether it be a person, whether it be guilt, whether it be, you know, all these different things. So I really like that. Um, the humor for me still with James Gunn, his jokes go on just a little bit too long for me. And I feel like that's always my issue with his movies. Um, but other than that, I really, really enjoyed it. And I got a little teary eyed. Didn't actually cry, but you know, I never did. Because you're a monster. <laughs> <laughs> if you get me a little teary-eyed, then you won. You know? Yeah. Then you, you, you hit me in the feels. If you show the chink in the armor, you got me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> How exactly. about you, Andres? <laughs> okay, so going into this movie, again, Marvel's track record lately has been floundering at best. Like, I don't think we got a great movie from the MCU in over a year and a half by this point now, which was so strange because I'm used to like every other movie sort of being like a good home run or at least just yeah. a great time. Whereas like this to me felt like it felt like everything I loved about the MCU wrapped up in one movie. This to me is a top five MCU movie. If that it's my favorite out of the franchise, like, echoing everything that Nancy said it goes deeper than all the other ones. This is a much more mature movie. This is also one that, in watching all the Guardians movies, one, two, watching um, Infinity War, uh, Endgame, the Christmas special, hell, we even threw the first 15 minutes of Thor, Love and Thunder in just to really round it all out and stuff like that. And this is one of those franchises where the rare time where this film, if you go back and you rewatch all the other ones, it makes it such a much more intriguing and a better experience overall because you start seeing little things in Rocket, little things in Peter Quill that pay off in this film. And you're just like, wow, if James Gunn really was planning this all the way from day one, 10 years ago with this film, then kudos to him this is such an amazing movie i thought it was it, it was such a great surprise unlike all y'all i did tear up all right i did definitely tear up with this movie as an animal i lover, said i teared up i just said i didn't cry I didn't oh, like I make it out oh i, I, oh, I cried oh, okay. oh, I cry. well, you didn't tear up then you cried oh i just cried i just cried yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. oh yeah but but it's, it's one of those things where it's so effective this movie's so effective because that's the one thing I've heard across the board is that everybody is feeling something, feeling at least some type of emotion from seeing these characters and sort of getting the goodbye to the team in general. 
it's just it's just a great achievement. It's it's I think it's the best trilogy oh, Marvel's easily. ever done <clears throat> by, oh, by e- a landslide. Easily. easily. Although I will say, <laughs> um, a friend of mine who had never seen any of the Guardians movies uh, took his son to go see. Um, Guardians 1 and 2 and then it was going to go into 3 right afterwards and then he's like oh yeah we're going to watch all three of them and then, and then all of a sudden he's like uh, when he started watching the third one he's like there is a big block of things that AMC did not want to tell us before the movie happened because this was his first time watching them and uh-huh. there's a big gap of stuff that, of like really big things that happened between volume 2 and volume 3 because you don't have uh, Infinity War and Endgame in that entire thing. That's like, oh yeah, it's it's kind of yeah. funny. Like, and and then there's that scene where Nebula is sort of catching the audience up. He's like, all right, I got I got exactly everything that happened in between those two movies. <laughs> yep, yep, it was great. And I love how James Gunn even did like a little jab at like how they handled Quill in, in Infinity War. He was like, yep, lost my temper, almost killed half the universe. <laughs> <laughs> I was yeah, like, be, yeah, because because James Gunn has gone on record and saying that that yeah. was the one choice that he did not agree with with Infinity yep. War, and he yep. had no he had no say in terms of what he could do because again, the MCU is very much whatever Kevin Feige he wants, he gets, and you know to a certain extent, I kind of have to agree with him on that because we've seen Quill lose more than Gamora at that point, but yep. you know, but again, love this movie. Thought it was great. It's such a great time at the movies. Go see it big. Go see it in IMAX. Go see it before uh, Fast X takes uh, takes that thunder away uh, the the week after. So mm-hmm. there you go. My, that's my five cents. <laughs> Your five cents really felt like twenty five cents. If I'm being honest, yeah, <laughs> felt like twenty five at least. <laughs> All right, here's a dollar. <laughs> yeah, that's more. That's more like it. Um, but yeah, I I love this movie too. I. I, I, you know, I went into this a little bit apprehensive just because of how I've felt about the MCU the past couple of years. It's been very inconsistent, a lot of disappointing properties. Um, but I was hoping that James Gunn could bring it home here, not just for the trilogy, but really kind of remind me why I love Marvel and why I love seeing every one of these movies and watching all these shows. And it gave me all of that and more. Like, it's just, it reminds you why you love the Guardians of the Galaxy so much. They're easily, like, the highlight of the MCU for me. They're just such colorful, eclectic characters that deeply care about one another. And I love how they show that in this movie. The fact, like Nancy said, that they hid, you know, the main plot line of the movie of them trying to save Rocket is basically the main objective. And I love how as soon as they realize they need to get some code in order to help rocket like it you just saw like quill just like snap he's like all right we're gonna do it i don't care what the fuck we have to do i'm gonna save my friend like he doesn't want to lose anyone else and none of them want to lose rock and i just love how much they show how much they care about each other i also thought it was adorable how like you could hear them giving each other like nicknames throughout the movie like when i when i heard quill call nebula nebs i was like that's adorable i was like (laughs) they must be so close now i was like oh that like that was like so such a sweet little moment and they're such great character interactions and the action sequences are phenomenal there's one hallway sequence that is i think it might possibly be one of my favorite marvel things ever <laughs> it's so well done did not expect it at all and they you know they made it look like one long shot it was probably stitched together pretty cleverly maybe um but it looked fantastic and i love that it's made it feel like okay this team is such a well-oiled machine at this point that they they're just so in sync with each other they know what each other is going to do and that's why it felt so seamless it didn't just feel like a gimmick you know to say oh hey we did a one-shot sequence it actually like felt like there was a reason why it was happening and just every action sequence felt like that i love the action the movie the humor i don't think it was too overdone there like like nancy said there were some moments where i think the jokes there was like one extra joke that didn't need to be said like we could have just moved on but we got our first f-bomb which i thought was fucking great uh <laughs> with, with quill um <laughs> Which is, I'm so glad we had, we got a chance to see that in the MCU. That I'm landed glad. perfectly too. Yeah, that it was landed so a... good. It got my audience so good. Oh, like, oh, was like, what do I do now? Open the fucking door. <laughs> <laughs> it just reminds so me when, like, uh, when you're trying to like unlock it while someone's trying to pull yeah, it, and you that, guys yeah, are doing this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just like, just hold on. It's so good. Oh, my God. Um, and then, of course, the rocket stuff is just heartbreaking. It's traumatic. As someone who loves animals myself, like, I cried. Um, you know, like, that whole sequence where, you know, Rocket is on the verge of dying, but then, like, you know, it's not his time yet. But that whole, like, kind of 
heavenly oh. sequence. That that's where I just cried. I, I had teared up before that, but that was a sequence where I'm like, and here we go. Here, <laughs> here comes the waterworks. Here we are. It's and, just so and, well done. And what a great job by Linda, um, Linda Cardellini. Oh Cardellini. I mean, like at first when I saw her credit appear, I thought it was like, oh, Hawkeye's wife's going to be in this. How's that going to be? I know. That's yeah, what I thought, that's too. What I, thought. I was like, yeah. what? And it's like, oh, no, she's Lila. Oh, my God. She's incredible. Like, yep. it's almost like it's almost like someone's going, you have this wonderful actress there who's just kind of just in the background <laughs> with Hawkeye. And you give her something really great. And she breaks your heart in this. And she's not even there physically. Yep. It's, it's it's so good. Oh, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I guess let's get into spoilers. Well, I mean, I think we've already gotten there, but like <laughs> yeah. there's just so oh, yeah. many we're transition. There's just so many good <gasps> moments in this movie that I love. I mean, I think you just really see how far characters have come in terms of their arcs, especially like Nebula has come such a long way and I loved her in this movie. She's fantastic. I love her, you know, banter with Quill. I love the way that she, you know, talks What's... to Mantis and Drax. Like that whole family dynamic is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> and it's interesting because it's almost like she switched positions with Gamora, where now she, Gamora's the one that's kind of rough around the edges. She doesn't really trust a lot of people. She, You know yep. what I mean? And then Nebula's more all about like being part of this family now and has really softened up. So it's interesting to see their dynamics change. And she's, mm -hmm. you know, giving Gamora... I feel like she's trying to get her where, like, hey, I remember you as this, like nicer person <laughs> you know like hey remember we're sisters we you know we we've come a long way but of course Gamora doesn't know that part of it yeah yeah and, and, and it also goes to show like you know Quill is not the only one that lost somebody when Gamora died like even watching volume two there's that moment where where Nebula just tells Gamora like you know you were so you were so adamant about always coming out on top you never thought about what I wanted, and every time you won in a fight, my dad would replace a body part with me and would cause me so much pain, and you never once took it upon yourself to basically notice how much I was suffering. And then that Gamora, the second she realized that, that's when she, that's when she sort of lightened up, and she really wanted that sister, whereas with this Gamora, we don't necessarily have, we don't necessarily have exactly that same interaction, but you do feel like there's the mutual respect between the two. But there's, but there is a difference between the mutual respect and the mutual love that they have for one another that they had in the previous films. But you know, also talking about Gamora as well. I mean, I, I just love the fact that James Gunn did not end this movie with Peter Quill and Gamora getting back together. Or yeah, at least, that was a good move. That was a good move. Yeah, like like it sort of felt like they were heading down that road. And then it just showed, you know what, Peter, you were in love with another person. I'm not that person. Yeah. And there was also just the the sense of like, will Gamora join the Guardians again? And by the finale of the movie, you know, you I, I love the moment where she heads back to the Ravengers and then she sees everybody that's there and yeah. they're all happy to see her and it feels like a family unit right then and there. We just saw that off screen and that sort of like gets yeah. you in the mode where it's like you know what? It's it's probably like like even though it sucks that she's not back in on the Guardians, this is where she's the happiest. She had the same exact thing happen with the Ravengers that happened with the Guardians with the last film, and that's ultimately at the end of the day what's more important for this character. And I think that's what Quill realizes by the very end is that she's happy with these other people. You got to let them go, and you got to find a way to move on. So. Oh goodness! I I I really like. We're all talking about the rocket stuff, but even the Gamora stuff and the Nebula stuff, I thought yeah, was so really yeah. fantastic. Well, that's what I meant by you know sticking to the thing of you know letting go because Cool had to let go of the fact that this isn't the same person that he loved. It literally is not yeah. the same person, even though he wanted it. You know, he kept trying to remind her of how they were in love and how the you know like get her back to that place and he finally had to realize that that's not her and kind of let go of Gamora in that sense and then you have Rocket letting go of that guilt of feeling that he's the cause of all his you know friends death and you know feeling guilty about that and I feel at the very end he finally let that guilt go and realized he could be like part of this family so yeah I really yeah. liked it yeah and I really Absolutely. loved the friendship between Mantis and Drax, I think I love. I was just about I, uh, to say that I, too. I love them together. Like that scene oh, was so. That was great. another letting go. go yeah, ahead. 
I mm. love that scene where uh, like her and Nebula are having a fight and she's defending Drax and he's like you know she's like he's like yeah he's dumb but he's he's the only person who doesn't fucking hate himself <laughs> and I was like <laughs> and I was like that's so true and then like how she quickly just makes him forget that she called him dumb I thought that was kind of yeah sweet. oh I yeah. like that part yeah. <laughs> but like, she's like, Wait, never mind so, yeah. <laughs> but it was she's just like, like it was just like such a sweet friendship and like you know when they said goodbye at the end and Drax is all teary eyed I really felt that I was like you know like all of them they don't want to let go of each other but like they know that yeah. for them all to really be happy they need to and we finally got to see him as a dad and I that oh, was that was that. the other one I was thinking of was I feel like he let go a little bit of that not necessarily the pain of losing his daughter but it was almost like okay I'm ready to like be a dad visit those feelings and like yeah take care of these kids and you know we saw him in dad mode, which was really oh, nice. Yeah, and Nebula's line completely destroyed me when she's like, you know, you weren't born to be a destroyer. You were born to be a dad. I was like, oh. Yeah. yeah. I was like, that oh, landed nice. perfectly. I was like, fuck. <laughs> I was and, and, like, and, oh. And, and, and I remember watching that trailer for the first time and being like, Drax, Drax is going to be the one that goes. And then as we got closer to yeah. it, we were just like, oh, no, Rocket's going to be the one that goes. And then literally when the movie comes out, none of them. Yeah, none like, of them like, this die. Is one, this is one of the few stories where we had a legitimate happy ending for everybody. Like maybe, maybe not necessarily happy in the fact that they all stay together, but they all they're all happy in the sense that, like, like Mantis says, they don't hate each other by the end of this movie, or they don't hate themselves. Yeah. They all come to some sort of an emotional catharsis in the film that they're able to deviate and they're able to separate from one another. And that I thought was such a beautiful message and such a great little little way to wrap up this particular set of guardians. So And yeah. I will say one part I really liked, um, I was talking to Khan about this. So at the very end when well, throughout the movie Gamora's like, What the hell? How do you understand what Groot is saying? All oh, he's right. saying is I am Groot and at the very end she starts understanding him. Yeah, that was awesome. Uh, and then, so at the very end of the movie, when Groot says, "I love you guys," oh, our theater um, lost it. We were, everyone was like, yeah. "What?" I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> um, but Khan was saying he was reading that there's a theory of like similar to Gamora, the more uh, that she got close to him and started caring about him more, she actually started understanding him. So the theory is that like because we've been through three movies now, we've gotten to know Groot that like us as an audience are starting to like understand what he's saying. So I thought okay. that was a cute theory. Interesting theory. Yeah, that's great. I don't know if it's true, but I, that's a cute I'm theory sure, that I'm I would sure like James to believe. I'm sure James Gunn would just be like, I'll take that. <laughs> yeah. I'll take that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll take that. James Gunn at some point is going to go on Twitter and he's just going to be like, yes, that's exactly what I thought. James yeah. Gunn, I mean, I swear to God, I mean like th there's certain, certain times where we're in when uh, when he goes on Twitter and when he reveals a little something about the movie that we just didn't know about, yeah. it always ends up being something that's like, oh my god, like Groot's last words as he's disappearing in Infinity War was literally him calling Rocket, Dad, what's going on? And then he disappears and you're like, oh my god, God, yeah. how could you how could you put us through this? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, just, just twist the knife. Just, <laughs> just twist the knife a little oh, yeah. bit harder. Uh, but question though, what do we think of Will Poulter as Adam Warlock? I think that I think he did a good job. Obviously, I don't have any background on Warlock or you know any of these, but he felt shoehorned into the movie. I felt like he wasn't really utilized a lot. By the end, it kind of paid off, but it just I don't know. It just didn't feel like it fit together well. I guess shoehorned is the best way I could explain it. Okay, all right. All right, how about you, Andres? How'd you feel about him? I'm a little mixed on Warlock because Warlock is one of those characters that if you read the Infinity Saga, he went up toe-to-toe -to -toe with Thanos with the Infinity Gauntlet completed. Like, this is a character who's that strong and that powerful. So the second when he first appears and he does all that damage, I mean, like, God, I mean, he, he for, for a second, I was worried that we lost Groot. Because the second that Groot wraps around him and he comes right down and his entire body is burnt except for the head, I was like, oh my god, did we just lose Groot? Mm -hmm. I was like, yeah. and for a character that is that powerful and is that strong and that much of a, an intimidating presence in the comics, they did sort of try to humanize him a little bit and try to sort of turn him into a little bit of a punchline or a joke with the, with the dog a little bit where he's like, 
oh no, that's terrible. I, no, I, I love this dog. I mean, but although I still like those little touches here and there, I do have to agree with Nancy. It sort of felt like he could have been sort of the secondary antagonist, if that makes any sense, where they kind of turned him into a little bit of a lackey in this. But overall, it's just fine. Um, I would have liked to have seen something a little more closer to the comics because he is that formidable of an opponent, and mm -hmm. especially going up against the Guardians. I thought that was great. Um, I don't have any major complaints about it. It's just, it, it feels like we didn't get enough of him, but... Mm -hmm. We didn't get enough of him, but we didn't get too little to the point where it really became a downgrade for me, if that makes any sense. He fit perfectly where he was supposed to. I hope we see him in more installments of the MCU, and I thought Poulter did a great job. Well, I feel the like they made that clear in the mid credit sequence where he's now a member of the Guardians with Rocket at the helm. So, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so we'll definitely be seeing more of him. But, yeah, I mean, they definitely made it clear early on, like, you know, he was, like, taken out of his cocoon early, and he was basically, like, an adult infant who is just kind of like still trying to like learn how to be an adult or whatever so like that's why like i enjoyed his performance and understood kind of like why he didn't really know like where he fit in like you know is he supposed to do this is he's you know just taking orders like he was still trying to figure out his place so i felt like it kind of worked how kind of like i don't know messy he was every time he showed up so i was just kind of like yeah, yeah he, he doesn't really know how to be you know like himself yet like he's still kind of growing into himself so yeah he's gonna be fucking weird <laughs> he's gonna be oh, yeah. and, and he's, he's just gonna destroy man. shit and he doesn't really know a how powerful baby. he is like he can and, do all this shit and he's still learning how strong he is and, and he's also getting used to his costume too like the second yeah. he comes in and he bashes rocket he's like and then he's like fumbling around with his cape i thought that was hilarious yeah but um but yeah and then uh but again like will Poulter, i thought did a great job with that um oh my goodness i was gonna i was gonna say that was oh, weird the, that the she scene with, called um, her I was gonna say I was. I thought it was weird that he kept calling her mom because I was like, "You guys don't look like that much of an age difference between each other." Yeah. <laughs> I don't well, know. Well, that, well, it like threw me off. I was like, "Wait, is that like? Yeah. Was that literally supposed to be his mom, or is it like? Oh, yeah. uh, okay. I wasn't sure. It's because in that universe, the the way they the way they make. Uh, progeny is basically by growing them in cocoons because in the second Guardians movie there's that moment where it's like well um, like Peter Quill makes, makes sort of like a, a quip about how like how they actually make Earth babies in comparison to the to the um, the Sovereign and he's like and then mm. she's like oh maybe someday you should show me exactly how we do that and then oh, Gamora sort of right. takes that as, as flirting and it's like yeah, yeah so, so, so they all grow their progeny in cocoons but with I don't know, but it also feels so weird. And I was discussing this with a friend. We got that post credit where they were going to introduce Adam Warlock over six years ago. Yeah. And then this was sort of the payoff to that. It, th that's what sort of felt a little disappointing about it to me, at least. But a very minor nitpick for me at best about Adam Warlock. I thought Will Poulter did a great job. Though. Yeah, I mean, I'm just happy that James Gunn got to actually follow through on that post credit, and it wasn't one of just like one of those post credit that like ended up having no significance, which we've gotten before. So I'm glad he at least got to follow through on that. But we did touch on the high evolutionary. What did we think about the villain of the movie? Oh, my, oh okay. Uh, okay. I uh, guess. <laughs> no, 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 I, I was just about to say, uh, to the actor, I apologize. I was going to yeah, look up. Yeah, yeah, the name. I was going to look up yeah. how, how, how to pronounce the name, but you did an amazing job. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> but, that, but that was one thing I was going to say. <laughs> You're not you supposed to draw. evolutionary. You're not so <laughs> You're not supposed to draw attention to the fact that I try to, like, sideswipe. Bypass it, yeah. I bypass no, the name. No, no, no. I'm trying to say I'm in solidarity with you because I did the same exact thing. No, or, because I mean, when, when, I, when I did my review, I literally said, like, I'm not going to even try to pronounce this name because I know I'm going to butcher it, and I just apologize in advance, but you'll thank me later. <laughs> I was just like, I just, I looked up the name because I wanted to say his, but I have no clue. I have no clue, and I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, but man. like, like if so you want, high well, evolutionary, he right, shall but be. But like, if you want to hear me butcher it, I can. I'll, I'll get, you know, just for, you know, because I no. want to be respectful. <laughs> Let's do it. But even though this is going to come out so disrespectful, oh God, this name. Okay. Uh, Chuck Woody Uwuji? <laughs> I don't know if that's. I don't know that maybe. Let me see. Let me see. I mean, you could probably look up an interview where they say his name. Yeah, well, that's not always reliable, though. <laughs> yeah. I'm so, sure so, he yeah. would correct that. 
But anyways, I thought he was a very good yes. villain. I thought oh, that he we're, we're sorry. Was, we're sorry. Yeah. <laughs> but you did he a great job. You did a great job. Very menacing. Very evil. Someone, anyone that can take little precious animals and like be mean to them, you know, is fucking evil and awful. And he did a really job of it. And I'm glad Rocket ripped his face off. That's what he got. That's I, what I he can't deserved. believe they actually showed his face. I was like, wow, they went there. They actually showed yeah. the fucking the, the, the gruesome yeah. face. I was thinking Rocket just like scratched him up, maybe a few gouges. Well, I was like, oh, okay. No, nope. I didn't he even took like off his full face. No, it's like when he started scratching, I was like, oh, that's why he's got that weird rubbery face. I was like, oh, <laughs> I was like, I'm a, I'm a moron. <laughs> You RoboCop looking mother. Yeah, I was so I was so glad he said that. I was like, yeah, he looks just like fucking RoboCop. Oh yeah. What was there was another movie reference they kept saying. They referenced it like twice, and I thought it was hilarious, and I can't remember what it was. Maybe it'll I'll come have to, to you. Watch it again. Yeah. Yeah, I'll have to watch it again. <laughs> no, but he 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 was great in the movie. Very like Shakespearean. I I, I just thought he was fantastic. So 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 evil. I, I wish we just got, got to learn a little bit more about like why he wanted to like perfect the human race, a little bit more of his backstory, because it, it felt like a different version of Thanos, just like kind of like an you know an yeah. off-brand version of Thanos, where like almost also the same. Weird that he like used animals that were like human. Like I, I yeah, agree with it, you. I would have wanted a little bit weird. more of like why he went that route. Yeah. Well, yeah, like, I mean, I mean, it's one of those things where in the comics it's very defined that he's very much about the natural the natural world and in terms of how you know all these animals in the forest and all these animals that are not human or they're not certain alien types they manage to make their 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 ecosystems flourish so he kind of wanted to recreate that uh-huh. whereas in this it's sort of simplified a little bit like you get that here and there but we don't spend nearly as much time with it if if that makes any sense yeah, I I think I just would want a little bit more backstory there. But again, yeah. the movie's two and a half hours. You gotta like pick and you know pick your battles. Um, yeah. But like, especially since also, he's such a good actor, I would have liked to seen that. Just so he's not just like a villain who wants to, you know, make people better and you know what be you know genocidal. Just like we've seen that so many times before. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean, granted, when we saw his genocidal side, it was like, oh, that makes no. sense. When something's not working, he just starts from scratch. But it does. But to a certain extent, it doesn't. It's evil. It's absolutely evil. Yeah, it's but evil. it doesn't feel like. It doesn't feel like he's. He feels like he's legitimately doing the right thing. But the means that he's doing it for is freaking insane. I mean, even to the point where I mean, oh my god! I don't think. I, I never thought in a million years we would get a movie, a live action movie where we see Counter Earth. Which, for all you comic nerds uh, that don't know, um, Counter Earth is the Earth in Spider Man Unlimited. The weird Earth where everyone is sort of half animal and half something else and half human. Uh-huh. That, I-, I never thought we would ever get that in a live action movie. And the thought that we got that in this is bananas to me. And it, it, felt, it felt so intrinsic to the story and also with the high evolutionary as well too there's so many different avenues and aspects to go about that character that again i think they simplified him enough to everything that we know about him in the movie is what you need to know for this story because the story about this it's all about rocket and rocket is the the primary the primary point of view that we see in this film Oh, and I, I also I, how Rocket somehow came out with an accent <laughs> that was like, I was like, did they give yeah. him an accent? Did he just develop an accent somehow? I thought that was also a shout out to Bradley funny. Cooper for crushing it. Oh, my yeah. God. I always he, forget he, that. I always forget that he like voices him. That's like how good he is as Rocket. Hmm. Yeah, and honestly, two things. Two things about just this entire, just this entire performance, this entire movie in general. I mean. Bradley Cooper, fucking amazing job in this movie, an amazing job with having to sort of keep sort of like an emotional, an emotional through arc for Rocket all the way through that. When you watch that scene in the original film where he's like, I didn't ask to be made into a monster and tear apart. And then you can literally feel the performance every time he does that. And it was especially true in this movie. But, I mean, thank God we got Bradley Cooper in because I don't know if I would have liked uh, Adam Sandler as Rocket Raccoon, which is what was being bantied around at the time. Oof. And apparently Pearl Mudder was very adamant about casting a comedian for that role. 
Thank God he lost on that front. But also, goodness. I mean, I remember driving away from the theater and talking to Jen about this and being like, thank God James Gunn got to direct this movie because there was a time where he was fired from it. Yeah. And that mm-hmm. he wasn't going to do it. I can't imagine anybody else making a story as emotionally reverent and as emotionally intense as this one was and so satisfying that it's just it's it it, it, it makes me it makes me so thankful that we have gun in on this front <laughs> yep i also didn't realize that um rocket didn't realize he was a raccoon i always thought when he said like i'm not a raccoon i thought he was just being like Shut the hell up! Like, don't call me like an yeah. animal I love, I, or something. Yeah, I love when he I was actually. Like, call, oh, love, he's yeah. like, I am a raccoon. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I love when he actually calls himself Rocket Raccoon. I was like, that's I dope. Know. That's dope. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> oh, love it. Uh, love it. Love it. Love it. Love so it. So good. So and, good. And it was also great seeing Peter see his grandpa. Like, I feel like that was awesome. <gasps> him, him yeah. going back to Earth. Because I thought that was great that they explored that. I think I forget who he, he was talking to, where they were just like, you know, like when you left Earth, like you still had family there. They might still be alive. Did you ever think about that? And you know, like really made Do him you like really question want to himself. Talk about this. Uh, um, oh, well, I'll talk about it all day. Uh, oh, oh no! Oh, oh no! Oh no! I'm talking about the scene where we're like he's no, literally shutting down the, the, the shields. Yeah. Oh, I know. Um, but yeah, like that whole scene where he gets to be reunited with his grandpa, and his grandpa immediately recognizes him. Love that oh, scene. That- so heartwarming and I love the whole post credit scene of them talking about like their neighbor's son or whatever it was just like a great like grandson <laughs> grandpa talk I don't know I loved it I know people hate waiting through all the credits for a scene as like kind of like silly and short as that I don't know I liked it <laughs> no no and, and, nice. that, and that goes and that goes to everything that's very important about this film and everything that important <laughs> important I'm sorry that, that was so weird <laughs> <laughs> I mean, every, every, everything that's really resonating and important with the audience there you go. is is none of the stuff that feels like Kevin Feige is really trying to shove down our throats. This entire movie, I did not even think about Kang the Conqueror. Not even for one second. I didn't even fucking care about the multiverse. I didn't nope. care about all this bullshit that they're going to be setting up in the next two phases. What I was really invested in, what was happening there and now, and the characters that we gotten to know... That, to me, is sort of what the MCU has been lacking for the past couple of movies because everything, fe- I mean, more so than Phase 2 or Phase 3, it just kind of feels like we're, we're they're trying to barrel us to Kang. And at this point, it was, it was just, it was refreshing to see something that wasn't connected to a bigger universe. And for all those people that were upset about the post-credits, I mean... The last one I can I kind of understand, but I really like the mid credit. Oh, with, with I, the I Guardians. love that. Yeah, the new Guardians yeah. team. I love that. It was yeah, great to see Rocket in leader and, mode. And everybody, everybody sort of throwing out which well, who's their favorite, um, who's their favorite artist of that particular time. And we was like, what was her name? She was like, oh, I really like Britney Spears. It was like, what? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that was great. Well, it was great that we got to the two thousands. Yeah. yeah, I'm also sure MCU is very happy that you're starting to forget about King the Conqueror. I'm yeah, sure. I'm, sure, I'm sure they're loving that. But see, with I'm the, sure they're <laughs> like, yes, keep but, but forgetting. Like, the thing about James Gunn that I love is that his Guardians movies they they've always seemed so disinterested in connecting to like the larger MCU story. Like they just want to tell their stories and focus on those characters, and that's why those movies work so well. Because like even in the original Guardians of the Galaxy, that whole scene with Thanos, he didn't want to do that scene. He was just told you need to have the scene in the movie to set this up and he's like fine but the rest of the movie he got to make the way he wanted it's just and the second movie a lot of people were upset because it wasn't really connecting to anything and he wanted to explore that story with peter and his dad and all that it was just it's great he always he's like i don't care it's like i want to tell my story with these characters and that's why they work so well that's why they're so good which is exactly what i think the mcu has been going i mean this is one of the reasons why i thought shang chi was the best oh that was, was so one of good. the best films so in phase four because oh, easily the best. <laughs> I, I, for, for me, it's a tie between Shang and um, Spider-Man No Way Home. For me, the, that's yeah. the two-way tie for me. Because, Wait, are we, are we still in Phase 4? No, we're in 5. Okay. That's the big problem, is yeah. that the end uh, well, of Phase 4 was... When did, when did we start I Phase 5? Care. I feel like I forgot. <laughs> Qua- Quantumania we could be in 3 or 5 oh. or 6 or 8. All it's right. all the same. Yeah. Like, all right. 
whatever. But, 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 that, but that's exactly what I'm talking about, where it sort of feels like with every one of the phases previously, we I'm sorry. ended with a big event movie. I, for, I don't know. For some reason, the way like you stuttered there sounded like freaking <laughs> por- <laughs> like Porky Pig from like the end. <laughs> Son of a and, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, like, like as soon as you did, I just lost it. I was like, whatever he's saying, I'm not going to know. <laughs> oh my god! Woo. That's how you know. We're getting <sighs> to the end of the show. Yeah, that's how you know. Oh my <laughs> god! But anyway, um, let, let's give this a rating out of five pints. What would we give Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Three? Now that we've talked about it in depth, let's start with Nancy. What would you give it? I'll say four and a half. It got me in the feels. So that's hard to do. All right, solid, solid. How about you, Andre? Uh, you know what? I'm going to go down the same road and say that this is the best of the franchise. This is a top five MCU movie for me. So I'd be very, um, I, I, I'd be, I'd be very, 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 very. Whatever the word not, is that you're looking for. The, 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 the reminisce. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm I feel very, like, very I feel whatever like, the word is I'm trying to think of right now. I feel now. like your internal system is like. <laughs> Trying to reboot itself. My, my, my internal system is very, is very much. Oh, dip, 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 dip. <laughs> now, now, if I could, now, if I could just reach toward, that if I could reach towards Tom and just be like, you will not laugh. <laughs> you, you just will pull not. the mantis. Yep. <laughs> you are hopelessly in love with him. I love that scene too. <laughs> uh, All right. He's like but, every uh, time. Every time. Every time. But um, but if I was to give this a rating, uh, it's a five out of five for me. It's it's yeah. absolutely a five out of five. Nice. And this is very rare when when the last five out of five that I gave was for John Wick, and that and, and again that felt like it was a culmination of that franchise, and it ended so well. And then this one as well too is a perfect culmination of Guardians. Uh-huh. I mean, God. I mean, yeah. It's 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 absolutely a movie. I fully recommend it to anyone. I fully recommend anybody who is able to stomach it because this movie like is not for everybody. I, I I will be the first in line to say that, that this movie is far more mature than all the other ones. This movie feels like if you had watched the first Guardians movie when you were eight years old, this is the Guardians movie that you're going to get as a high schooler, if that makes any sense. Like, this is the movie that feels like the franchise has matured to something different and it's become more mature. I don't necessarily know if I would recommend this to kids, but for you know, maybe they might have a good time. Maybe they might not, or maybe they might get traumatized at seeing a rabbit with freaking teeth. <laughs> uh-huh. I mean, rabbits story. do have teeth, but okay. You mean like well, with well, like with like with like the trap. legs or whatever? Well, well like like that. You mean metal like, over? Yeah, it was the, metal yeah. over. Yeah, not yeah, I, teeth. I, I, but. I thought I thought I thought that was like a, I thought that was like a, a jaw trap or something like that. But anyway. But yeah, five out of five. Five out of five. five, out of five. five, out of five is what I'm saying. Five, okay. five yeah. out of five, but with the caveat that this is a much more intense and much more mature film. Gotcha. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with Nancy's rating here. I'm gonna go four and a half because I do feel like I said I wanted to learn more about the high evolutionary and we didn't really get to. So he was more just like evil, and that was pretty much it. Um, even though that was a great performance. And I also do feel like the movie was just like a smidge too long. Like it did feel like I did feel the two and a half hours. Like it, it felt like there were some bits here that could have been taken out, trimmed the fat a little bit. But other than that, it really is a super satisfying, well-made, beautiful conclusion to this trilogy that cements the Guardians of the Galaxy as easily the best MCU trilogy. This is definitely one of my favorite MCU movies, the best movie they've done in a long, long time. Um, so I was very, very happy with it. But let us know in the comments what you thought of Guardians of the Galaxy 3. Did you love it? Did you hate it? Did you feel like it was just okay? Let us know in the comment section below. And, of course, let us know what you thought about the trailers we talked about, all three of them. And uh, tune in for our next episode in a couple weeks where we're, we're going to be talking about family, everybody. We're going to be talking about <laughs> Fast and Furious. That's right. Oh, man. The Saturday morning cartoon returns. <laughs> <laughs> Guess I'm going to have to watch 2 through 9. You Wait, you've never seen 2 through 9? Nope, I haven't seen. I fell off after the first one. Rough. Okay, so I really like the first one, but you're gonna have to watch two and nine, and then Hobbs and Shaw because Hobbs and Shaw. Do I though? So enjoy your journey. (laughs) Enjoy your journey Uh, so much. (laughs) But but before we uh, head on out, Nancy, where can the people find you on the interwebs? 
You can find me at PL underscore Band-Aid on Instagram and Twitter. Ooh, I switched it. I don't like that. Twitter and Instagram. That's what I usually say. Uh, ooh. It, like, felt wrong. My OCD Gross. was like, ugh. But Gross. I don't like that. <laughs> but on Twitter and Instagram, that's where you can find me. I guess recommend which ones are your favorite, Fast and Furious, and let me know if I actually do have to watch Hobbs and Shaw. I'd prefer not to, but we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> okay. Andres, how about you? Uh, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram as Galagos. You can also find me on Twitch.tv as Galagos209. Um, over on the High Voltage Media channel, we're doing a retrospective on the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the 1978 movie versus the, 2000, uh, the 2003 remake. That one's been delayed a little bit because we had to reshoot it, unfortunately, but it is, it is being worked on as we speak right now. We should have that coming down the pipeline very soon. Very, very cool. And if you want to follow me on the interwebs, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Tom Chattelbash, and you can find me on Facebook and YouTube at Chattelbash Reviews. And of course, you can find all three of us here on the Film on Tap podcast, where we have new episodes every other week. And until our next episode, thank you for watching or listening to Film on Tap, where we've got the tap that never runs out. We'll see you guys. WGA Strong!